pretty good night last night. Hanging out with just some good campfire talk and hanging out and kind of what we were planning on for, yeah, I'm warming up my glasses, they're cold enough. Sitting on the windowsills if they keep fogging up. Um, kind of planning on what we're gonna do today. We're losing one in the group, Casey. Uh, he's headed back to Fort Worth, Dallas area today. So we're kind of rethinking what we're doing. Also, um, up in the Yosemite area, they've been having some serious flash flooding and that was our direction. Uh, and I know they've shut the park. Uh, there's probably five or six different areas where the roads are out. So we have to take that in consideration as well. Anyway, uh, this is one of the nice things about having this. Um, I'm sitting on the bed right now and um, I've already brushed my teeth and washed my face and now I'm making coffee in here. It, it just makes it super convenient. All the guys are still asleep, so I didn't have to get up to do this. And it's pretty chilly out there right now. It's probably 40. Um, so, yeah. I'm going to make some coffee and kind of kick back and wait for the guys to get up. And then I'm going to get this show on the road. Thanks for watching this vlog series. kind of wanted to just add to this vlog series while I was in here. Um, I've got the tailgate down and just the topper lid shut. So it gives nice breeze in here. But like I said, it's still real cool out there. Now I can understand why um, people like Jason from Primal Outdoors and Software in the Rest love Donald from Software in the West. Love <clears throat> having an internal space. Because right, I'm still in bed right now. And... Like I said earlier, I've already brushed my teeth, made coffee. Um, having coffee, I can look out the window and see everything. I've got windows to open up on both sides. And it's a really nice way to take up the morning, to be able to enjoy it instead of have to like rush out of bed. Right when you get out of your tent bed, you know, hop up and I can just kind of chill here. And it's nice and quiet in here. And I'm not disturbing the other people in the camp, which is a good thing too. And we'll end up doing a walk around. Like you guys are on my, we'll call it my sink counter. Um, but I ended up going with Renergy solar stuff to put in here. I've got a DC to DC to MPT PPT charger and solar controller just right here. And uh, maybe you saw it earlier in the other video, the Renergy 2000 watt sign inverter. I've got that right there. And then <clears throat> under this bed system, I have a cubby on this side for dirty clothes. And then in the middle, I have a battery bank space for 300 amp AGM batteries. So last night, I it got pretty cool, but I have an electric heater that I run along uh, with this. And uh, reason being is I have a CPAP. And so if it gets cold, the, the colder it gets, it starts um freezing the moisture in the CPAP going into my lungs so I can't have that obviously that's how you get pneumonia so I just put that heater on um a timer and set it for eight hours and then set it for 60 degrees <clears throat> and let it run and it doesn't run all night it only comes on enough to warm it and I run it in eco mode so I think it takes I think it takes 10 degrees below 60 before it turns back on. So it heats the cabin up to 60. And then as soon as it hits 60, it turns off. And then I think it has to drop all the way to 50 before it turns back on. And that's essentially like the eco mode. But it works good enough to keep the air warm enough that it's not freezing inside my lungs. So that's good. But <clears throat> we'll do a full, full rock around. I will tell you this though, guys. You know, I love having the trailer and the Gladiator and the trailer were set up were amazing, but this is super, super convenient too. And I told you, I felt like the camper was one of the most convenient ways to do it. And especially how we had that built out because you could just stop and get in it. Well, I only keep one bin in here. There's only one bin in the walkway. Uh, and that's like dried goods and stuff in a, in a, in a box. So this is very much the same way. All you have to do is open the swing outs 
um, and get in. Now, I could, and I plan on moving the shovel. Once I move the shovel, all you would have to do is open up the uh, hatch, climb in here, shut it, and then you're, you're good to go for, you know, if you're going to make food. My, uh, I have a, a small stove that I keep inside, a one burner stove. So I have that inside here with propane. I've also got my Scottle. <clears throat> I've got one of the mini scuttles. So, you could really do a lot from the space. So I get it now. You just wouldn't, I, I guess you couldn't assume how can, how much the convenience improves having a setup like this. Because my fridge is in here on the slide, I can pull it out there and use it out there. But, <clears throat> if I'm in here, I can open it from the top. And so everything that I need is in here. So, I would say, I would say it's a close second um, to the trailer. Anyway, hopefully the next time I talk to you guys, we're getting on the trail. I think this morning we're going to run down into Telluride, get a few supplies, and from there, we're going to carry, I think we're going to cut straight up to uh, Narita. And then from Narita, we're going to go north into the mountains and get on the Rim Rocker and take Rim Rocker across to uh, Utah. <clears throat> it's going to be about 110 miles of dirt because we go from right there in Narita. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Um, from there on trail across into Utah. And then we take Schaefer to Onion Creek and then Onion Creek into Moab. We're just outside of Moab, then into Moab. I think that's our plan now. <laughs> we may stay on, we may camp one night in Onion Creek. I don't know. But I'll sure show you in this vlog series. Thanks for hanging out. Okay, guys. So we finally got to do what we wanted to do, and this is going to be the first walk around this trip. And we're doing a vlog series, so we're going to get through them all. But what we wanted to show you guys is the capability of these full size rigs, what they do to them to make them capable even on these small trails that we're on and so this is Casey and he's going to give us a, just a quick run through of what he's done to the truck now and then maybe some things to look out for pros and cons when you're building one. Casey? What's up guys? Uh, I'm Casey. This is my 2021 Silverado. It is a uh, three liter Duramax four wheel drive. Uh, it's sitting on Stage four icon suspension, tubular control arms, uh, 37 inch tires, 17 inch wheels for that super cush ride when we air down. Trying to follow this guy up the, <laughs> up the trail when he's hauling butt in his Raptor. Uh, anyways, we got the KC lights up front, ditch lights. Um, we got a little, uh, our two way GMRS uh, antenna up top for our in cab communications on the trail, works great. Um, moving to the back of the truck, the bed rack setup is actually going to be coming off. Uh, it's going to be, I've got a RSI smart cap topper that is going on kind of like a Brian's Raptor. So it'll be a fully enclosed cab setup, kind of a canopy style with gullwing doors. Uh, it'll make access to the bed of the truck a lot easier. Um, and also keep everything a lot cleaner and a little bit well more protected and secure. Let me ask you something about this What's suspension, up? Casey. So we've, we've done a bunch. I'm going to pan over here real quick because you guys can't really see it real well because of the way we're sitting. We're kind of in a, in a weird area. But he's done a lot of manipulation with the suspension. And there you go. That's, that's pretty nice. So, so you can see it off in there. And what I wanted you guys to see is that he really does use the adjustment process. Um... And I can only assume the reason why it does is because it does make that much of a difference. So Casey, would you speak to what you're changing and, and why you're changing? So anytime we're, uh, you know, we're, we're chasing the highway, um, I like it to be a lot stiffer. It handles the ride a lot better, corners a lot better. It drives like a, a car when we've got this thing stiffened up. Uh, my adjusters are right down here. Um, anytime we hit the trail, I'll go ahead and reach in here and it's got 10 levels of adjustment oh, yeah, I so can I can go yeah. uh, zero to one or I mean uh, zero to 10. So zero being the softest, 10 being the stiffest. And uh, man, it really does make the uh, world of difference when we're, you know, going off some off camber and some rough stuff, especially airing down the tires. 
So let me ask you, on a one to ten, how would you rate your KCs? Man, I love them. Um, you know, it's it's kind of a kind of one of those things where, you know, there's tons of lights out there that are are great. You know, great lights for a lot less money than what you're spending right. on the KC lights. Right. You know, like Brian's doing his build on the Raptor, he's got an awesome light set up, and he probably spent half of what I've got on the KC lights. So, <laughs> but they're pretty. Yeah, you know, it's it's one of those things. It's just uh, kind of what you want and what you want to look like, and how much light you want to put out. So, all right, well, let's move to the bed back series so we can see what's going on in there. Okay, guys, we're back in the uh, back of this truck, and I wanted to kind of show you how it's really built out well. And it's really built out with the uh, consideration of convenience. And he's going to kind of walk through uh, the double swing out, the CVT tent. It does have the road shower on it. And just kind of why he went that route and what challenges it proposes, but also the benefits to it. Casey? All right, guys. So as you can see, we got the, uh, the dual tire swing set up out here uh, by Westcott Designs. Um, so... This is what I primarily carry fuel and extra water on. Um, this actually will swing out further and this stainless steel table drops down. So what I can do is I'll swing it out further. I'll drop my tailgate and then uh, this can be my, my table will be right here and this will be my little cooking preparation area. I've got uh, some KC Cyclones wired up in here, um, some lights for just bed illumination. And then I also have some more KC Cyclones wired up on the, the corners for turn signals and brake lights as well. Um, as you can see, we have the deck system in here. I love the deck system. It's a great option for the people that still want to have a fully usable bed space and also have the drawer convenience. Um, however, with this current setup, I do have some drawbacks. Uh, anytime I need to get into the deck system, I have to take both my swing arms, pull them out, unscrew them, lock, lock them in place, drop the tailgate, and then open my deck system. So it can be, it can be kind, of a, kind of a hassle if you're trying to get back into here quickly. Um, so here pretty soon I'm gonna reorganize some things and, and put the more usable things that I use more often, easily accessible. Um, most of my recovery gear is in my trash room that is easily accessible for, uh, for quick recoveries if need be. Um, this side's my gear, and then this side is gonna be where all my ca uh, camp kitchen stuff is. So it's pretty well organized. I like to keep it nice. And I see some fishing stuff here as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were supposed to do a little bit of fishing, but uh, we had some road closures and, and some routes, and also I, uh, I keep my little fishing pole stuck up in here out of the way. Speaking, see of, it. speaking of that, not to cut you off, but it gives you a bunch of diversity from what I'm seeing on where you can store different items, keep them separated, and then they're still readily available, but they're covered from the water and rain, and it still gives you this flex deck system to have other things that you may not need on every trip or that differ exactly. from every trip. So Exactly. Like this on this trip, we brought a... Uh, we brought my big propane fire pit. Right. I don't take that everywhere we go because we don't have fire restrictions everywhere we go. Uh, our current locations, there is fire restrictions. So right. propane fire right. pit's the way to go. So that we just slide up in there uh, along with an extra propane tank. I do have a five gallon tank mounted up there as you can see close to the cab uh, next to the high lift jack. Who, who made the rack? Whose rack is this? Uh, it is KB Voodoo Customs KB or Voodoo. KB Voodoo Fabrications. And is it specific so, just to this model truck? Uh, they it? have it's adjustable, but right. it, this one is for the model of this vehicle. They offer right. a pretty wide, uh, pretty wide variety of racks, and they've got some pretty cool options. They've actually got some bed trays that sit on top of the bed that slide full oh, out. Oh, right. They're, they're, they're pretty cool. Yeah, they've got some good options. Let but, me ask you this: So, are you happy with your? <laughs> I love the tent. I love it. Uh, before the CVT, I hear a hood, butt. I hear a butt coming up. I love the tent. Um, before this CVT uh, clamshell, I had the CVT Mount Rainier, uh, giant four-person, you know, standard fold-out uh, rooftop tent. Had a big giant annex. The annex is what I miss. Okay. So we had that nice personal space. And it makes sense. We it use it for changing. We use it for getting out of in inclement weather. We right. use it for going to the bathroom. Eating. Um, eating. I mean, anything. You just want to get away from the bugs. You could hide out in that annex. Obviously, with this tent, I do not have the annex anymore. So it's 
there's some drawbacks to it, but then again, I can set this up in less than 30 seconds and I'm ready to sleep. So, okay. it makes so let's, move, let's move to the tires. So you just recently went with these. What'd you run before? What size are they? And how do you, what's your first impression to the pro comps being the first time you run it? So before the uh, 37s, I had Nitto Ridge Grapplers. They were 34 inch by 17 tires. Um, those tires were terrible. They were F rated. They were they were F rated. They were slick. They were slick on the. If you get a very slight mist on wet pavement, man, you could not keep the 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 rear end from sliding around on the truck. Right. Um, especially being a turbo diesel, as soon as that turbo would kick in, it would yeah it would yep. kick the kick the rear end of the truck around. Right here with the same. Um, these tires. I have absolutely loved them. I've put Good. close to 10,000 miles on them already. Okay. And uh, 37 inch mud terrains, they're quiet. They get fantastic grip. They're super smooth ride. I don't have any harsh road asking. vibrations. Yeah, no, no fighting the front wheel. No, no, anything. not at all. Not wanting to walk. No, in fact, Good. the Good. in fact, I feel like the Nitto Ridge Grapplers kind of followed the highway a little bit more than these do. These right. kind of just track pretty straight. As long as you've got them aired up to the right PSI, I usually run about 40 on the highway, okay. and uh, and it's golden. So good. good wear, you know, no noise, great traction. Okay, so moving on. So, what would you, what would you suggest to people that have a full size rig now, that they're wanting to do something like this? How would you suggest um, they go about beginning the build to do kind of what we do? Some light rock crawling, rock crawling, rock landing. Uh, more aggressive camping trails, you know, what would you tell them that they needed to start with first? Now that you've built this, if you were to start over, what would be the number one thing you'd start with? Well, you've got to figure out what you're wanting to do, whether yeah. you're whether you're more geared toward the wheeling side of things or the touring side of things. Right. Um, and also, how many people are going to be with you if it's just you singular? Uh, or if you you know Which have, a, have a family, yeah. I mean it really does matter. How much you so, carry water? Food. Exactly, that makes a big, yeah. big, big difference. Um, really, you know, my advice to anybody is before you just run out and start buying gear and buying rooftop tents right. and buying bed racks and lift kits and all this other stuff, yeah. figure out what you want to do. Figure out what's important for your build and for the adventures that you want to do right and then from there based on what's important whether do you do you want a fully enclosed cab or a fully enclosed bed that's secure and weatherproof or do you want a bed rack system with a fold-out tent you know right. there's there's so many different options and or you want to do just a ground tent with you know so a deck system and all your gears in there you pitch a ground tent wherever you want sure. to go you know I know some people like to Four wheel, and then they park their truck, and then they hike a, a mile yeah, into mile. camp. So or, or bike. Yeah. So since we've been on mostly Jeep trails, yes. Would you say you had any hindrance being in a full size truck? Oh man, um, when you're at the back of the pack <laughs> and you don't have a spotter behind you on a shelf road, turning. It can get. Yeah, it can get you. Uh, it can get your stomach. I agree. Turning. The, 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 the turning was. Was yeah. the only time that some of the heavy switchbacks is where you really kind of yearn for, you know, my JL or Gladiator that, that turned a little more nimbly or yeah, or, not such a long wheelbase, <laughs> not yeah. so wide, and obviously I've got the big Fiberworks fenders, so that gives me an extra yeah, six inches on the front of the truck, which is uh, it's a little rough. Well, I think that's about I think that's about everything we wanted to cover, and I think it gives a I get it gives the new people a good insight into full-size rigs on these very same trails that they watch videos on they want to do um, we didn't tell them what you do what, what do you do for a living I am a Chevrolet mechanic so I have literally done everything on this truck I have done 100% myself uh, wiring suspension everything um, so what he's saying is he knows his stuff and what's your Instagram uh, adventure bound 1989 so if you've got something like this and you just want to look at the rig and how it's built maybe you have questions for him specifically on yours or his they can reach out to you message you and and he'll kind of get of back to you obviously he's got a full-time life uh but but he'll do his best to kind of help you out well casey i appreciate it yes sir it's been thanks. a fun trip yeah it has thanks guys
guys, I know you may have already seen it, but in one of my other videos, but I always love coming through Main Street. I'll tell you right, it's just, it's picture perfect. It's picturesque. It's beautiful. Uh, and then obviously you guys can see straight ahead of us. I have got to find somewhere to dump some trash. We can do that. There's uh, the waterfall coming down just to the right side of that. That's where Black Bear uh, comes down the face and then you can tell you right. the coffee place that I go to. It's called the Phoenix Bean. It's pretty good. And Mark, just so you know, they do. Pedestrians have the right of way here.
Guys, we made it five hours not so rough all the time definitely rough sometimes incredibly dusty this is where we made it to we made it to a reservoir uh almost to the utah border from telluride five hours on the trail we're done uh this is what we get to go to sleep to wake up to there's only two other people in the park other than us guys right now and so 
this is ours. We've already been watching uh, deer grazing out in this field. So here it is. We've got the, obviously the tent up because we're next to some water and there is some mosquitoes. But Justin's getting busy. Mark's over there getting busy as well. He's got his rig set up. I'm set up here. This is what we have. So appreciate it like we do. And uh, I'll think you guys